I've always been an animal lover. Ever since I saw a picture of a dog, I've been like, I want that. I still love and respect animals, but as a kid, it was pretty intense, not gonna lie. Can we get a dog? Can we get a dog? Can we get a dog? My parents had to sit through years of that until my dad finally couldn't handle it anymore and got me one for my seventh birthday against my mom's will. Before that, they tried everything to make me stop besides getting me a dog. And by everything, I mean a bunch of fish. Maybe if we shape these fish into a dog, she won't notice. They'd come home with two fish from the pet store that would last for about a week, die, and then get replaced. Repeat until dog appears. How many fish must die before I get what I want? Since we got fish from the pet store and not an actual breeder, that was probably a big contributing factor on why they died so quickly. But as a five-year-old, I also just forgot to feed them a lot, so there's gotta be some fish blood on my hands for that. We went through probably 20 fish in the span of a couple months, but eventually we got these two goldfish that didn't die. A true miracle. They were pretty resilient little dudes. One was Goldie, and the other was probably named Fishy. Probably some of the most creatively flawless names I've ever known. But after a while, Goldie turned white, so I renamed it Rainbow because I thought it was cool he could change colors. I learned 13 years later from my marine biology teacher that Goldie slash Rainbow was probably diseased, which makes the color change less exciting. We eventually gave them away to my mom's friend and they died. But that's all besides the point. My parents got me an army of fish and a dog I named Scruffy, but that was it. I wasn't able to crack them any further than that. And believe me, I tried. My parents had to become stone-faced, emotionless soldiers to keep my non-stop beseeching for more creatures at bay. After they got me a dog, I was pretty sad satisfied for about a year and a half until I decided I wanted a mouse. Something about their cute little faces and how they crawl with their cute little feet and their freaking ears made me obsess over having one and my parents got to hear all about it. I asked my parents for a mouse for years, promising how I'd take care of it and blah 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 the whole thing. My mom pretty much hates rodents because she thinks their tails are weird, so there was no budging on that one. She tried to get me to stop by saying, alright, you can get a mouse, but we'd have to get rid of Scruffy which is obviously a bad bang for your buck. No, what? No, no way, no, -uh. I'd never get rid of Scruffy. He's my pal for life. But not gonna lie, after hearing that response over 10 times, I started kinda considering it. I wasn't ever actually gonna do it. I was just getting desperate, all right? When I was 10, I wrote on my Christmas wish list that I wanted a mouse because I thought for some reason I'd foiled their plans and found a loophole. Ha! You can't override the power of the holy Christmas spirit. Christmas morning rolled around and I ran into the living room where all the presents were to not only find no mouse, but a computer mouse. Nice salt in the wound there, mom. I got my hopes up way too high. My disappointment was immeasurable and my Christmas was ruined. I did get a computer though, so that was cool. After my parents endured five years of me asking for a mouse, I read this book series called Maximum Ride, which was about these teenagers who had bird wings and were on the run to not get captured by the scientists who wanted to keep experimenting on them. It was my favorite book series as a kid, and it made me really like birds, which resulted in the next animal obsession. I swear to God, if I hear one more mention of a mouse again, I'm gonna- Mom, can we get Amazon parrot? Yes, I started loving birds back when I was in sixth grade. Everyone say a big thanks to James Patterson for creating this bird-obsessed monster. At the time, I wanted one of the big boy birds. A yellow-naped Amazon parrot, to be exact. I would spend hours just watching all the YouTube videos I could find of them and sending them to my parents like, Look! Look how great they are! You totally want one now, don't you, after watching one play in a box and sing Old MacDonald? This was a whole new type of fixation. I mapped out on the ground where the cage could go with tape, googled where Amazon parrot breeders were near me, I made multiple PowerPoint presentations for my parents on why they should let me get a parrot. It was intense, and the pressure was on. My mom was even like, so how about that mouse? But no, mom, that ship has sailed. Now I want a 15-inch parrot that lives for 80 years. They started telling me, you can get a bird when you move out. And from then on, it was my goal to get out of my parents' house as soon as I could. Obviously, I never got a yellow-naped Amazon parrot, but I never really got out of my bird phase because I've got this thickums right here. I was pretty self-aware that asking for a parrot was a long shot, so even though I still wanted a bird, I dialed back my animal requests, and when I was 14, I started really liking flying squirrels. They were my favorite animal for a while, and that's when I realized people can have them as pets. Sugar gliders. Mom, can we- 
Sugar glider, add that one to the list. I don't think I actually bothered my parents too much about getting flying squirrels as much as the mouse and parrot, but I know they knew I wanted one. And I knew they knew I knew they were gonna say no. So I guess I just kept that one a bit more internal. During the summer, we would visit my family in Canada, and my cousin Peyton was really obsessed with ferrets at the time. So we would spend literally entire days on the computers together, researching ferrets and flying squirrels, and Amazon parrots because they were still my number one obsession, lest not forget. We wrote down general facts we learned in Word documents, planned out how to care for them, added up how much money they cost including cages, food, bedding, etc, etc. We were the same amount of obsessed. It was a lot of fun actually. We bonded a lot during those times and she's still one of my best friends. She also never got a ferret, so sad times there. Peyton also got a rat named Lola and that made me really want a rat. Which of course meant Mom! Lola was so sweet and smart, and I always wanted to play with her. But that's also true with almost anyone's pets. If I come over to your house and you have any type of pet, I will be personally offended if you don't let me play with it for at least three hours. So I did have a small point where I was asking if my parents would let me have a rat, and my mom was like, nope, and I'd be all, but what about the time you were gonna let me get a mouse because I was asking for a parrot? And she would say, nope, that ship has sailed. Touché, mother. During 10th grade, I was also starting to really like raccoons. I thought they were sneaky and cool, and I googled if people had them as pets as a random, not serious thought. But surprise, surprise, some people do have raccoon pets. <gasps> Just kidding, they rip up couches and dig holes in walls, and I'm not that devoted to raccoons. But I still dreamed about having a raccoon buddy someday. Finally, I graduated from high school and moved into a dorm in college that didn't allow pets which was torture for me. I waited all this time to move out, and I'm still not able to bring a horde of mice, rats, birds, sugar gliders, and maybe a raccoon into the rooms. But YouTube started kicking off shortly after, and I moved back in with my parents to pursue that. Flash forward a bit, and I was finally able to get Ari. After 10 years of wanting a bird, I'd finally done it. And what a gander he is. Was he worth the wait? No, he's a dumb bird. You're good. You're a good bird. I'm not currently looking to get any more animals right now, even though I really want them. I have Ari and he's already enough of a handful, so I can't commit to anything else right now. I am gonna get a dog eventually, that's a promise. And I do really like reptiles, so I've done my fair share of research on skinks, but that's only a 30% chance to actually happen. I haven't really grown out of my animal phase. I've just become a mix of that and my parents. Still hopelessly entranced by creatures, but also being the one who has to tell myself no because I have other stupid responsibilities. Hopefully when I have kids, they won't be as animal obsessed as I am because I don't think I have the strength my parents had to be able to say no to any animals they ask for. Thank God my parents were responsible and never got me animals just because I asked for them. Otherwise, I'd be living in a zoo. Now, I know you guys, and this is absolutely gonna trigger a bombardment of tweets to me with pictures of the pets you have, and all I can say to that is... Bring it on. It took a while, but the Ari bags and a lot of other new things are now being sold on the shop, so you might be interested in some of that. I'm sorry it took a while to get finished, but I hope you like the stuff. Uh, that's all I want to say for now. Yeah, bye.